you calling me? I was okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome, uh, Secretary Yellen. Uh, I just want to start. Do, do you know how much a dollar that you held at the start of the Biden administration in January 2021 is worth today? Well, we've had inflation and it's declined in its purchasing it's, it's, power. It's worth 87 cents. In your testimony, you said that inflation is the number one economic problem. Uh, do you know what the inflation rate was at the start of the Biden administration in January 2021? It was substantially low. It was 1.4%. Uh, you said that inflation has many causes. I, I agree with that. By the way, I, I would say that the number one economic problem is our debt and deficit. And I would say that the top three causes of inflation are massive deficit spending, uh, the war on fossil fuels, which has driven energy, gasoline prices to record levels, uh, obviously supply chain dislocation. That was caused by our miserably failed and it, 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 in st incredibly stupid response to COVID, the pandemic. But would you agree those are the top three causes of inflation? Uh, deficit spending, high energy costs, and supply dislocations? I don't believe that deficit spending is one of the main causes you, you of inflation. You don't? I mean, inflation is too many dollars chasing too few goods. Well, so when, you, when you're printing all this stuff, but, so do you know in the first three fiscal years of the Biden administration, you know how much the total deficit spending is going to be? We had um, a, an economic collapse that was caused by Right, and we were, we were certainly coming out of that because there's all this pent-up demand and a sloshing around of trillions of dollars. So I'll answer that question for you, too. In the first three fiscal years of this administration, the total deficits would be about $5.7 trillion. So now, so now you're, you're, you're here testifying before the, about the uh, president's budget. How much are the total deficits over that 10-year period according to the president's budget? You don't know that off the top of your head? Um. Yeah, that's not, I'm running out. It's seventeen trillion dollars. Okay. Yeah, that's. Uh, you're going to drive the debt from somewhere around thirty-two trillion up to about fifty trillion dollars, correct? Yes, but what what I believe is the single most import, important metric for judging the fiscal stance of the country is real net interest as a share of GDP. Okay. We have so, so a, are you concerned when, you, when you're taking the debt from 32 to 50 trillion dollars? Are you concerned who's going to buy that debt, and also at what rate they'll expect to be compensated for buying riskier and riskier debt? Are you concerned about that? Well, if the net interest, real net interest cost of the debt remains low relative to GDP, and we're on a sustainable. Fiscal well, we're, we're not. Course. We're not. We're not on a well, sustainable I, path. Are you, I, you know, I, I Senator, Senator Cassidy was Senator Cassidy was talking about the president's uh, demagoguery on Social Security, unwillingness to meet to try and save Social Security. Uh, if we do nothing, and the Social Security trust fund runs out 2023 to 2025, about the end of the budget period, are you concerned about? Are we going to have the financial wherewithal to plus up benefits to honor those promises? I mean, you, you think we're going with 50 trillion dollars in debt? You know, debt's exceeding uh, our GDP. Aren't you concerned about our inability to honor those promises? The interest cost on the debt as a share of our economy remains quite low throughout the 10-year horizon of the president's budget. It remains yeah, around 1%. Secretary, you, you were also the one who said very that... very manageable. You, you also said the, that inflation was transitory, and it certainly isn't. And I think Chairman Powell certainly now agrees the fact that, no, we've got something going on here that's going to take a very long while, unfortunately, to ring out of our system. Uh, not only you, but uh, Director, OMB Director Young and members of the other side keep talking about uh, that you're cutting deficits. Uh, the deficit in 2021 obviously was high because of the pandemic. But in 2022, it was about $1.4 trillion. 2023, we're thinking it's going to be about $1.6 trillion. 2024, you're uh, projecting $1.85 trillion. And again, growing debt by another seven. It never drops below $1.5 trillion. How can, you, how can you claim that you're cutting deficits? Well, it always is a comparison with the baseline of what would happen if our policies I mean, were not really enacted and the increase in deficits would be larger. Um, 
there's net re deficit but, but reduction say, saying, over saying ten you're years cutting the deficit is just misleading the American public. Let me ask you one, one final that. question. Uh, because we always hear on the other side, same thing from OMB Director Young yesterday, that we want to make the rich pay their fair share. So, I mean, the fact is, and this is the latest figures we have from the Treasury, 2020, the top 1% made about 22% of income, but they paid 42.3% of the income tax. Now, at, at, I just, I'm not going to ask you the metric. At what point... I mean, how much of the total income tax should the top 1% pay before you'll consider and before President Biden will consider they're finally paying their fair share? I mean, they're paying double the income tax that they're being, getting in income. It's obviously a highly progressive rate. By the way, the bottom... My, my, they're paying my colleagues a, over his time, and I want the, okay. uh, the witness to answer his question. Well, I, I believe that billionaires should pay um, rates that are... Um, not lower than what a teacher or firefighter pay, okay, pays. Okay, the top 1% averages in the time of the, the, time of the sorry, gentleman's that just expired. Isn't the case Senator, now. Senator, well, Senator Tillis, my, my is colleague next. got seven minutes. But the top 1% paid in the, the time of the gentleman's expired. The bottom 50% pay 3.1. We have a highly progressive tax system. Senator Tillis, you're next. 